All right, let's check out what's going on with SLP. So for once, I'm gonna start off with the higher time frames. Uh, I just made a video on Axie, and these are basically the exact same chart. I'm sure you know this. Uh, but Axie Infinity and SLP are two cryptos that are linked. What's happened for Axie? I just made a video, had a big uptrend, back tested the 786 twice, and now we're starting to head up. And what are we seeing on SLP? We're seeing the exact same thing. So I mean. It's, it's basically the same analysis video that I'm making. There are a few differences, uh, but nonetheless, jumping into the macro term, uh, we have, starting off with the MFI and the RSI, we, we're putting in higher lows right now. You can see we've had a slight impulse from here, so I would have to assume this is your new higher low on both the RSI and the MFI, respectively, in the very, very macro term. We are building ascending support. Uh, we came down originally to our 786, back tested it, had an impulse. Uh, we came down, didn't quite reach the 786, and we started to move up. So this is a good sign. Uh, this is a higher low, and you're seeing higher lows on both the uh, the MFI and the RSI. So higher time frames, starting to warm up, starting to look a little bit nice. Uh, if we look though, I am still being slightly cautious. Now we have had a breakdown of this asymmetrical triangle and you know do bear in mind you know this is not my most likely scenario I am of the opinion uh, that SLP has bottomed and we are going to start to head up in the short term uh, but I do just want to be cautious because we've fallen out of this huge huge asymmetrical triangle maybe it's not huge maybe I'm gassing it a bit I mean it's, it's going on for like two and a half months and the apex of this would be well over three months so you know the the whole asymmetrical triangle by itself you know that's that's like a, a whole quarter of a year worth of pattern almost so I, I do think this is a very very big pattern uh we could like i said not my most likely scenario come up and get rejected at approximately the two cent region and come back down that would be your confirmed breakdown that would mean we're moving back down to the lows but like I said, that is just a scenario to be slightly cautious on. Uh, my macro perspective is we're heading up, we're starting to look good. But the conservative trader in me really wants to see this region broken. Now, I feel like I've talked about this multiple times because I was talking about it when we were down here in February. I was talking about it when we got into a trade uh, once we did pump above the 618. And I've, I've been saying this for a while, like this is the most important region. And, you know, you can see as soon as we did peak above it, we had an absolute explosion. The second we lost it, we had an explosion to the downside, really. This is, you know, the region 618 is at 211, but more importantly, uh, the upper uh, local high up here, and I, I'm lumping these two in, it's more of a resistance box, uh, is, is the upper level at 216. So I'd like to see 216 get broken once we break above 216, back test it. Uh, I'd be a lot more confident we're going to have a breakout of this asymmetrical triangle pattern, but I don't think this is going to be done in the next week or so. Bear in mind, this is a three month pattern that we have just fallen out the side of. So I am being slightly cautious. Uh, once we do break above 216, not only are we above the 618, not only are we above this local high, but we have broken back into the uh, the asymmetrical triangle pattern. And at which point we could consider this a fake out and hope that if we take the measurement tool, we would be heading up uh, for much, much higher price targets. Now, if we extrapolate this, you know, you, you could see a really, really big rally coming in. And, you know, this isn't even asking too much for SLP because, you know, macro term, we have been beaten down very harshly. And if Bitcoin is about to bottom out and start a massive uptrend, I definitely think SLP could do so as well. So once again, higher time frames, starting to look good. Uh, ascending support on the RSI and the MFI. We're putting in higher lows on the chart. Once again, I will be cautious until we do at least break around the two cent region, break back into this triangle. And then most importantly, 216 needs to get taken out. Once we break above the top of it, I'll be a lot more bullish and potentially consider uh, more accumulation for SLP. So that's the long term. Let's see what's going on in these smaller time frames. Now, if we look at the momentum indicators, starting off with the daily, uh, the bears are still very much in control. But like I said, my gut feeling is that we have bottomed around here. So I imagine the bulls are going to start picking up a fight in the shorter time frames. Uh, let's see what's going on in the four hour. Now, hopping over to the four hour. Uh, yeah, like I said, you can really see that bears are starting to completely lose all the, their momentum. When you see these dark red candles to the downside, it means that bears are losing control and we're starting to have a push up. 
if we come over to the one hour you can see uh, bears have flipped bullish on the one hour it is a little bit degenerative looking at this on the one hour because you are just trading you know bumps up and down the chart uh, nonetheless i think the one hourly ema is is much more valid so I'm not re really going to focus on the hourly squeeze mom. I much prefer to look at it as a four hourly and daily. But nonetheless, hourly EMA ribbons, very important. Uh, we never managed to break back above these. You can see we always topped out candle uh, body closes, at least got stopped out at the long term moving average uh, at the top of these EMA ribbons every single time we came back into them. And we are picking up bullish momentum, which is why we were able to break to the top of these. You can see hourly volume. We had a exponentially green candle uh, that allowed us to shatter through the top of these EMA ribbons. And if we zoom in on the hourly, uh, let me highlight the uh, short term moving average. I always highlight it and it just disappears every time. Uh, but nonetheless, you can see there the thicker line, the 21 EMA, I believe, uh, the short term moving average, nonetheless, let's see, uh, 21 EMA, short term moving average is starting to head up very, very fast, which is a great sign. Uh, this means that if you're watching this in four hours time or so, uh, and we keep on heading up, I mean, you can see that little tick just move this up a little bit more. If you're watching this in the next hour or so, and we're still hovering around the 1.76 vicinity, or even better, if we're pushing up higher, uh, we could potentially be seeing, you know, a big, big breakout uh, for SLP in the short term. We can also see uh, whether you want to do this from the wicks, that would in, uh, be indicative of a bear, of a bull flag, or whether you want to do it like this, and you know, it's more like a, a, a or sorry, the, the other one, this would be a bullish pennant, this would be a bull flag. Uh, nonetheless, that I mean, they both pretty much look like pennants anyway, so uh, it doesn't really matter. Nonetheless, we've got a big, big move going on here. Should I do it to the bottom? I'll be conservative and do it from the bottom of this trend. Uh, so you can see, big breakout. Let's see where this would take us on to the four hourly time frame. Uh, this would put us right up into the middle of these four hourly EMA ribbons. That would provide enough momentum, in my opinion, uh, for the downtrend on the four hourly squeeze mom to start heading to the upside. That would also similarly, e that would easily, easily flip these EMA ribbons as super bullish. I imagine the squeeze momentum indicator would have a massive shoot to the upside on the four hour. Like I said, don't want to focus on the four hourly uh, squeeze mob too much. Uh, but nonetheless, macro term, uh, the bears are still technically in control. We are seeing an increase in momentum. And the reason why I'm being cautious is once again, we have just fallen out of this three month long, you know, um, ascending triangle. If we take this out, you can see this is approximately 96 days. So coming on for a quarter of a year worth of a pattern. Now, it is possible once again, this is not my most likely scenario, it is possible we could come up to two cent and have a massive, massive rejection. That would be indicative that Bitcoin's going to move up to 42.5 and then get rejected. Now, I'm not of the opinion that's going to happen. Like, I've been highlighting this for the past week or so. Uh, we called the flush out for Bitcoin. I said, in my opinion, something like this is going to happen. We're going to come down and, you know, quickly very much uh, shoot out of this region. Now, we've started to push up for Bitcoin. I personally think Bitcoin has bottomed and it's going to start heading up. I think that will allow enough momentum on the four hour for bulls to take back control which in turn uh, will mean that bears will start losing control on the daily squeeze mom. Uh, that is basically all I see. I'm really liking this setup. Like we've got higher lows, the MFI is increasing, the RSI is increasing, but I am just being cautious until we do hop above 216. Until we do hop above 216, you know, that we could be setting up for a, a fake out, a rejection of this asymmetrical triangle, and then a big, big move to the downside. And if we flip this on its head, and took the price target if we got rejected from the two cent i mean th this would be in the minuses so there's there's really not much i can uh, i can talk about from there but that's another reason why i mean slp is you know close enough to zero already it really can't get flushed out too much more before it heads down to zero so uh, is just something to keep in mind. I do like the setup of this chart very much, uh, but I'm conservative. I want to see 216 get broken. Once 216 gets broken, not only will the hourly be super bullish, it will mean the bulls are in control in the four hourly as well. And yeah, I, I think we can really start to get bullish once we hop above 1.9 cent. Nonetheless, I I'm very bullish on what we're setting up for now. So that's all I've got for SLP. I could be looking to accumulate again once we do hop above 216. Until that happens, I'm going to be sitting on the sideline. I'll let you know when we uh, make 
uh, a decision whether the Bulls are going to take back control. Probably tomorrow. That's all I've got for you today. Cowboy out, not financial advice. Peace.